Good morning, YouTube America. My, uh, another installment, my video log on uh, world building and game mastering and gaming in general. Uh, old school gaming always been my preference. Of course, I didn't used to call it old, you know, old school gaming back in the day. I'd like to mention a, a game system. I, I think I mentioned it once or twice in a, pre in a couple previous installments. Uh, it's, to my best of my knowledge, it's no longer in, in, in circulation. It's no longer in production, which is a which is a shame. Uh, I, I speculate one of them is because you can't really improve on a good solid system. You can you could, but when you've got it right the first time, it's hard to make it improvements without radically changing it and messing it up. Uh, case in point, I believe that a lot of the D&Ds, uh, the uh, various advancements have actually been counterproductive. I think what they had it dialed in, uh, 2.0 or the second edition, uh, AD&D was the best system they put out, uh, although a lot of people argue about the rolling methods. I will grant you the D20 system simplified some things, but uh, so I've seen some significant advancements and improvements in the 3.5. But uh, what a lot of people fail to notice or under, understand is most of the, the improvements and additions to the later uh, versions of D&D are in reality existed in the earlier versions in supplements and additions and through uh, Dragon and Dungeon Magazine. So all they did was just call the more popular stuff and put it together in a new package just to resell it to you and make more money, which grants you is not a bad thing because you know it kept the company going, kept the, the concept going, and pushed the development of other stuff. But uh, dealing with science fiction games, there is far fewer uh, in the pantheon of RPGs and, and strategy war games uh, than there are as fantasy, hack and slash, or, or uh, uh, sword to sorcery, I guess, depending on how you want to argue it. A lot of people don't like the, der the derogatory, somewhat derogatory term of hack and slash. Uh, Space Opera is a game system produced by Fantasy Games Unlimited. It was, anyway. I don't believe these people are still in business. Uh, like I said, I've showed this before. You can Google it. You'll find that they're still selling these things on eBay in some uh, degree or another. Uh, here's a couple of the atlases to go with it. Uh, the uh, the beautiful thing about space opera in general was it was designed with the intentions of the, the you only needed these two books and it came as a set and you didn't need anything else and it still holds true today uh the creators of this were had cut their teeth growing up on the lynchman series and, and herbert's dune and uh prior you know asthma a prior science fiction to the more modern stuff uh, that was heralded by uh, uh, George Lucas' uh, Star Wars. Although they do make references of the original Star Wars in here as well. This was produced in 1980. Uh, I bought it. It was already cycling out by the time I bought it in 83, 82, 83. Uh, when I found it, it was regular. had been regulated to a bottom shelf in a box. Uh, the bookstore, the game store at the time, Irish Gen Dungeon, which was the only gaming store in Des Moines at the time, at least I was familiar with, uh, had made their run on it, and the popularity dropped off because of uh, new, newer, fancier, flashier, flashier stuff. Uh, that was competing at the time with a game system called Traveler. Uh, I didn't care for Traveler, not that there was anything wrong with it, but when you're a teenager, your money's limited, you can't afford to buy you know, everything, at least I couldn't. Uh, my best friend at the time, uh, Richard Gelson, he purchased the Traveler series. Well, I, I purchased, in this case, uh, Space Opera and uh, the original D&D basic sets. Uh, he bought Champions, I think is what it was called at the time. It might have been something else, uh, but the, the Champion uh, superhero system. I was getting Gamble World. He got Blue Hill. See what I'm talking about. Uh, Gamma, I understand Gamma World was reintroduced, which is, you know, hey, this, you know, space opera, this game system here, this, this game system deserves to be reintroduced in a newer format, not necessarily modified and changed, and, and, but it could be slightly updated. Uh, one of the, a number of the advantages to this game system, 
is that, first off, the designers kind of had a, a desire to include uh, real scientific-based and medicinal-based uh, concepts. So, not that it was very technical, mind you, it's just that it has a wider skill set for its character classes and includes things that you would not see in a lot of uh, more modern systems. Uh, the modern stuff glazes over some of these skill sets and, and career choices uh, and, you know, what we call feats today uh, by consolidating them into smaller headings or bigger headings with uh, less meaning so they cover more things instead of having a lot of individual things. Uh, you know, uh, the space opera concept, uh, the creators had this belief that uh, science and medicine play will play a significant role in any kind of futuristic society and advancement. So they included it in the game system. Uh, you'll find rules for creating characters, uh, for generating random worlds and their environments. I enjoyed that. As a matter of fact, I incorporated some of that in my own uh, Stellar Frontiers. Uh, I took Stellar Frontiers to a much grander level, so there's, there's some similarities to this, but the argument can be made that every game system is similar to another game system by default. Most of your fantasy, sorcery, sword and hack and slash game systems out there, hey, Pathfinder fans, what's Pathfinder but just a different version of the classic Dungeons and Dragons? You've taken, they've taken Dungeons and Dragons, they've retweaked it, made some significant wordage changes, but the mechanics, the procedures, the policy, the standards, the magic, all of it's the same, and that's a, the reason behind that is is once you once you know once you build uh, you know once you build a solid foundation, it's hard to improve on the solid foundation. You really have to get radical to introduce something totally new. Uh, my game system Stellar Frontiers actually does introduce something fairly radical and new, which you won't find in any other game system. It's self-sustainable and playable by yourself. You do not need other players to play it whole game can be randomly generated, all your encounters, so on and so forth. And I'm not focusing on that. I will get to that. But in another, another upcoming video log that you guys won't watch, since hardly anybody watches my stuff anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, what it is. Uh, I recommend if you can find a set of these, purchase them. If you can get a cheap set, hey, knock yourself out. They're a good addition to your shelf for no other reason than to read the material, for, for, re for, for reading the material that's there so you can learn to modify and, and, and develop your own uh, world building techniques. A lot of valuable stuff to be learned here, a lot of the stuff that can actually translate. Uh, one of the things Space Opera uh, used heavily was, to, I call it the D100, the percentage percentile system. It was prevalent before uh, Dungeons and Dragons introduced that code. Nobody understood what that was. You know, using a lot of six-sided dice, uh, which I've made the argument in previous videos that code worked fine. And truth, folks, that code's been villainized from people who really don't know what the hell they're talking about. No offense, but we used D20s a long time ago. The D20 system is nothing new. We used D20s a long time ago. We were using them all along. The only difference, significant difference was you used a, a three D6s to, to roll your stats. That's it. I'm sorry, but I don't remember using D6s exclusively because the original Dungeons & Dragons set from 1978 or 79 when I got it, it had a, a it had a 4, a 6, an 8, a 10, a 20 side die, and a 12 side die. And you use them all. You use them all, and you still do. You still do. So this so called D20 system is a mislabel. You use the D20 a little bit more often, but the truth of the matter is, you still use all those smaller, odd, odd size, even sized dice, uh, odd, odd sized shaped even sided dice because they're convenient. You, you need a D4, you need a D6, a D8, you might not need a D12, and a D10 or a pair of D20, D, D10s because you can get a 20 or uh, you can get a percentage out of those. Or just, I've even got D30s at home in a bag somewhere at my mom's. Well, space Opera itself, uh, the game system, 
was designed so you can envision your favorite science fiction movie or TV series or books and create a create a game system to, for your friends to share and play in. So if you were a fan of Dune, you couldn't go out and buy the the RPG Dune, uh, but you could take all the material from Herbert's books and apply the rules here and use it. As a matter of fact, we talk about some plagiarism and uh, I, I, and plagiarism a fine line because uh, between plagiarism and and uh, 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 paying homage to an iconic uh, series. Uh, space Opera actually has in one of the space atlases, one of the space atlases has a world, while they don't outright call it Arrakis, it's pretty damn close. It's a desert planet. It has Fremen that inhabit it, and all their behaviors and characteristics, including sandworms, are all there. Uh, it produces spice and how they get it and what it's used for. All of it's there. Uh, I think there's a couple other references from other game, uh, books and novel series pops up here and there, but that's because the creators were avid fans of those series. <coughs> it, it is what it is, and that's part of the part of the charm of thing. One of the things that they didn't do with the core book was give you any material such as background, uh, what was going on. They didn't give you the universe or the world to play in. They gave you the mechanics to create your own. They came in later at the, uh, with these things like these star atlases and modules and, and uh, so forth. The concept behind the star atlas, for example, this one here, basically the first 15 pages goes through the history of Earth and the development from Earth to a space-based uh, 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 empire and its name and you know what they did, the United Planets or whatever. It's kind of a knockoff of Star Trek's uh, United, you know, the, you know, uh, the Federation. Uh, not quite outright named that, but the concepts are quite similar. Where, uh, the, where it really significantly differs is it took a lot of the Cold War philosophy and mindset of the 60s and 70s and translated it into space. So one of the uh, star atlases deals with an empire that's basically built on uh, settlers from Eastern Soviet bloc nations who want to develop their own philosophy and, and, and uh, government. Uh, then there's a second one that's based on the you know, Western European uh, commercial mindsets and uh, corporate uh, structures and so on. And, and you see a little bit of that spread out. And there's some Star Atlases that actually deal with some alien races. That each one has its uh, background, history, and, and how things work together. So they have their galactic world building right here. Uh, so you have a playable system that you can just jump right into. Uh, if not, you're encouraged to create your own. And the mechanics are great. That's that's one. Like I said, I can't I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, the mechanics for creating worlds and settlements and uh, NPCs are very thorough, very well detailed. Uh, for those who are a big fan of having lots of rules to cover lots of contingencies so you don't have to ad-lib or make gut checks as you go, they do a good job of that too without overdoing it. Uh, as playability goes, I, I and my friends, we played it quite a bit back in, when we were teenagers back in the 80s uh, when things like Shadowrun and, and uh, uh, you know, let's see, Battletech came out. We, lost interest in this and moved on to the next thing. But I never lost interest in it as a system. I, it's been on my shelf for instance, recently came out of storage after it's been, a, been away a long time. But uh, it, uh, I went through it and reminded myself of why I, I enjoyed it and I uh, would still play it again to this day. <coughs> like I said, uh, for pure research and, and uh, source book material. It's been an excellent addition to any 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 player's uh, uh, shelving. Any would be GM uh, could benefit from some stuff in here. And a lot of it's translatable. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the old Rollmaster stuff. Uh, I had some of that from back in the day. Uh, the rules more complicated or concluded than the D&D stuff, but they allow some adjustments. But one of the things that made Rollmaster stand out to me was the D100 system, and uh, this one here does the same thing. Uh, the conversion is pretty simple. You want a D100 to be a D20 system, uh, whack off the last zero. That's up. Not hard to do, you know. 
it's of 80, it's 80, and you know, it's of 100, it's, it's 10, and or you know, 20. So just divide it by 20, or divide it by two, whatever you know, if you can convert it. A lot of people won't like doing their stuff, and it's not necessary to do it. It's really cool. The D100 system has quite a few advantages over the D20 system. Uh, a lot of arguments in that aspect. I learned a long time ago to be able to adapt and modify things to do a simplistic system that everybody can understand. That's part of the, the deal when you're dealing with a GM is being able to do that. So, folks, uh, as I said, to uh, wrap this up, this is a, an awesome system, very good system. I recommend you please try it once or twice. If you can't buy the original, get a PD, uh, PDA or whatever they call it uh, version of this. You can get them downloaded off the internet pretty cheap nowadays. Uh, give it a stab. Nothing else, go through it. Enjoy the reading material for the sake of the reading material. A lot of the stuff on my shelf, that's all it's ever done, is I never played, never got a time or chance to play. So I, but I read every bit of it and more than once. So uh, y'all have a good day and uh, enjoy yourselves.